G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. In today's episode we're in Northern Australia where I spend a lot of my time with Norfors. In today's episode we're going to be having a look at one of the most useful plants in the tropical north, the pandanus. Now here's a plant that typifies the tropical north of Australia. This is the Pandanus. Specifically this is Pandanus spiralis. There are another two Pandanus species, Pandanus basedowi and Pandanus aquaticus, which tends to congregate around waterways. This truly is a remarkable plant. This is a supermarket plant and Aboriginal people have used this for thousands of years for a variety of purposes. The trunk, the dead trunk, can be used to help uh, carry and transport fire. The leaves Aboriginal people um, used and still use to make string and baskets and mats today. The growing tip or where the, the, the leaf shoots, the leaf bases meet the trunk is an edible so um, food source packed full of carbohydrates. And the growing pineapple type fruit, once the fruit are, ripe, fruit are ripe, they can be eaten. They're quite sweet, especially when mixed with some hot water. It also has a load of medicinal uses. It truly is a remarkable plant and we're going to be having a look at this today. Pandanus spiralis likes a lot of water. Now it might not seem like that at the moment because we're in a, this area looks appears to be dry and in, but believe it or not in the wet season this whole area is under water. And this is a dried up re-entrant here and you'll fi find that pandanus, particularly spiralis, will um, hug those uh, re-entrants and waterways. Pandanus aquaticus will actually live in the water right along the water's edges. So when you see right across the floodplain country on the edges of floodplains you'll find lots of pandanus and it's a good indication that there's water there. You might have to dig for it but there's certainly water there in the wet season. So it's a good indication of where water could be or where it definitely is in the wet season. Pandanus spiralis gets its name because the leaves grow in a spiral-like configuration up the trunk. So it's very, very easy to recognise. The other two species of pandanus don't do that. So that's one thing that makes it very, very easy to recognise out in the field. Now the first thing you'll notice about the pandanus are the leaves and the spines that run along the sides of the leaves and the base, the, uh, the base rib. Now these spines are on the leaf whether they're green or dead and they actually can go in quite deep and they're quite painful. So you need to be careful when walking around the bush with these. Aboriginal people use these for, for, for making baskets and they still do for baskets and string and dilly bags and I've had the, the um, privilege of going out to Arnhem Land and pulling down some of the leaves and actually making them and, and in Kakadu as well with some of the bedding ladies there. It's quite an amazing experience. It's quite an act. It's a little bit harder than sand palm as well. And uh, But what I'm going to do, the, where the base of this, the leaf base, goes into the, the stump or the, the growing tip is an edible cabbage. I've just selected this one because it's lower to the ground so you can see. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull that out and just going to find the, the mid rib, which is this one here, and I'm going to, to pull this out. Now, generally speaking, this doesn't kill the plant because they have multiple heads on these and they, and they sprout back. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find this. Now, I don't have any gloves on, but I'm going to pull in the opposite way to the spines big spider in there too I just saw. So this may be a little bit too thick to pull out but we'll see. I'm going to bring you in closer for a little look here. So trying to grab these central ones. Just going to gently pull. Some might come out first go. <laughs> and hopefully it should just pull out nicely like that. And it's very, very easy. So, what I've done, I've pulled out this base, and I'm going to take off the outer husk, or the outer couple of leaves, 
and what we're left with inside is this beautifully fresh white part here and this you can eat and it just tastes like raw cabbage it's very very soft mm. I can eat it raw I can boil it up now about underneath the tree or basically from the leaf base where this came from there'll be about this much more under there so I could chop down and get into that and get quite a big section of that and we might have a look at that as well but just for a quick snack that's very easy for me to do the students the students as soon as it starts getting chew, chewy we just discard it but that's a very easy snack you could also cut that up and get enough of that and just stick that in a stew and boil it up as well but apart from doing that we don't have to stop there because we can have a look at these leaves i'm just going to split this leaf in half and what aboriginal people would do is folding that leaf in half and then very it's a push pull motion it's actually quite difficult to get the knack and pulling down one way and pushing up the other way and what i'm doing i'm splitting away those fibers and i pull you see that? I'll come over a bit closer so you can have a look. So we take our leaf and we fold it so that our the top end is at the back. It's the opposite sand palm. And then pulling down on one and up with the other, opposite directions. I'm actually doing this quite hard. Really squeezing and sliding one up so it's they're working opposite directions. You can see how I've just pulled the fibers away. Then it's just a matter of sliding those down or peeling them off. Right, doing spruce roots, pulling away, doing the two together. Aboriginal women can do this uh, so, so much more, more easily than I can. They really are the true masters of this. So I'm taking all the way that nice soft 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 fibre. You can see the leaf fibres in here and anything that's uh, got lots of fibres in is going to be good for fire lighting as well. So I just keep on pulling that apart. That's tend to split not the way I like as I liked it. And what I'm left with is this nice bit of fibres and from this you could make string and all sorts of things. And we've looked at that in another episode using a uh, reverse uh, wrap twist twisting we have list, looked at this in another episode we've looked at the rolling method and a few other methods of making string and it's very easy to do with pandanus and just doing a few little shots of this you can actually produce some um, cordage Aboriginal people prefer to roll it on their leg and I've demonstrated that in another uh, episode a bit difficult here because I've got long pants on and it, and it tends to uh, make that a little bit more tricky so just in a short time, I'm making a little bit of cordage. That rolling method, yeah, it's gonna be hard with these pants, that's just gonna slide. But straight off with, this, uh, with these leaf bases, you can actually make really good cordage and Aboriginal people would make their dilly bags and many, many other things using, using this. Wondrous stuff. And there's loads of it here, so have to be careful of those thorns. Now another way you could get at the growing tip of this is if we take a machete, we're going to cut off the outside leaves and we're going to give you a look at the edible trunk inside this. There are literally, there's hundreds, there's thousands of these everywhere. It's not, it's not you would never do this, there's only a few trees in one area, but believe me, there's so many here and we're in an area where we can harvest. So the cutting tool of the tropical north is a machete. This is the um, like the axe of the boreal forest. This is the tool of choice in this environment because this enables us to reach out and cut lots of vines and things like that that are in our way where we might want to stick our hand in because of snakes and, and, and spines and things like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut these away 
I could pull them apart, but that's going to take quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to cut. See so if you can see this. like a giant pineapple and what I'm after is this section in here so I'm going to cut this off about here and then we're going to have a look at it And there we go. The edible section we're after is, you can see this white, white base here. It's where the growing tip reaches or joins the, uh, the husk. So I'm just going to continue to take this off and we're going to have a look at that edible section in there. So here we are. That's the section we're after. It's all here that's that. It's quite soft. Mm. It's going to be a little bit better. It tastes better after you hook it up. As you can see, it tends to goes black really quickly. It really peels off beautifully. But that whole section, carbohydrates, particularly tastes better when you cook it up, but nothing wrong with it. It's fine. It's actually quite a bit of a moisture, moisture content in as well. So right up through, that's what you need to do. Just, now I've got spine quite a few times they really have to be careful that's why i left the leaves long because it makes it easy to cut it off you can do that just with your knife but it's easy initially with a machete believe me so this is what we teach people to eat on the north force survival courses because this is everywhere so there's no need to starve when you've got carbohydrates like this out in the bush really it's truly a amazing plant and there's loads and loads of it i'm probably going to cut some of this off cut up and you can just stick that into a stew and it works really well. Too much of it, you get this slightly bitter taste in your mouth. That's why I think I prefer it cooked, but it's still okay. There's that lovely heart there. Tell you what, these spines really pack a punch. Mmm, that's the best bit. Delicious. Now the other use for pandanus are the dead trunks. Now these are fantastic and Aboriginal people use, this, they use these to transport fire because all they are in the inside of a dead ones, when you get a good one, is a bunch of uh, fibres, just like a, a, a cigarette. And this acts as a slow burning cigarette. So I've just broken this um, in half from another dead one I've found, and I'm just gonna put some sparks into this central area here. So get the back of my knife and the ferro rod. You could just stick this in the fire as well, put some coals into it, and that's going to um, keep this burning for a while. So I'm just going to expose those, get my ferro rod, and as you can see, come over there, that's starting to glow. So there we go, just with a couple of sparks in that. All I have to do is blow on it. Amazing, really good. This will last for several hours, particularly if there's a light breeze blowing. You don't even need a breeze, just walking 
will keep that alight. But all I need to do is just get some grass. Always buff it up, usual tender preparation. Stick that in there. transporting this you need to be very careful because you don't want embers to blow off and then create a long trail of bushfire so you need to be I always have someone walking behind me and if I'm walking in front I've got a, a good uh, I'm being very very careful about uh, where those embers are going it depends on the breeze I'm not going to carry this around in strong winds common sense common sense you need to have a bit of a common sense about it but um, works really really well and that will stay alight for, for quite a long time. It's a little bit breezy today, so you can see how that's just coming, just relighting. I could carry that that way so that the breeze is not directly into it, but as soon as I expose it to the breeze, there you go. Just like a magic candle. Now beside the actual dead trunks, the leaves, dead leaves themselves, because they're good for cordage making, make great tinder to be used with a ferro rod. Once again, you need to be careful of the corners because they've still got spines on them. And like all tinder, when we're buffing it up in our hands, doing that when it's got spines is a lot of fun. But just by preparing that, the fibres, you can actually see the dead fibres in the end. But that's what we're using for um, to make uh, the cordage with before. So I'm just preparing that, increasing the surface area like we do for all our tinders. And that, if that's the only thing you've got for fire lighting, you can't find any trunks and you only got sparks, this will work quite well. We teach this on our courses as well. It's a lot easier with paper bark and things like that, but sometimes this is all you can find. Particularly if an area has been burnt out and there's no other grass or anything like that. Pandanus, um, dead leaves work really well as a, a tender source and that's because it's a bunch of compressed fibres. So I'm going to put a spark into that. It's all about exposing those fibres. They burn really well. So yet again, the other part of the pandanus is the pineapple-like fruit itself. Now, around September, October, when it's fruiting, it's just like a big pineapple. And it's got all these different segments in it. And each one of these these segments are all part of this big pineapple and they all fall off the trees and fall over the ground. And it's when they're this dark orange or ready orange, they're actually good to go and you can smell the, the nectar in there. You can actually suck on those. Little sweet, little bit of uh, bitterness. I prefer to chew on these and then stick them in some hot water to help macerate these a little to express the juice. But you can taste it, but they need to be like that. You can see the moisture in there. A little bit bitter, but that bitterness goes when you put it in hot water. Now, each of these sections is in itself a seed. There's Each of these is segmented itself, and there's a seed inside, which is packed full of protein. However, it's a real pain to get out. Now, Aboriginal people didn't spend too long getting them out. It was one of those foods that it's, it took too much effort to, to uh, um, liberate those nuts. But if you could, you could do that, um, I've actually got my machete stuck in these so many times because they're really, really tough. We might give it a go again, but it is pretty hard. But it's a lot, like almost like an almond-shaped nut in there. It's quite, they're only small or they're long, but it's quite, it's that uh, payoff versus expenditure of energy versus what you get back because it is quite a process to get them out. 
But what I think we might do is uh, make a fire and express some of the juice. We might make a sweet drink out of these. Here we go. Boiled some water from the creek, and I did check that to make sure there was no crocs. There's a couple of deeper holes up there, but that hole was fine. I definitely checked that first. Boiled up some water, and I've macerated the end of our uh, pandanus uh, segment and so to, to express the juice out of it. Now we've got a nice sweet drink, and that is actually quite nice. It's like a, a, a strange tasting honey, but it, it's quite nice. If I could find some uh, green ants, if we have a green ants, a green ant tea, but I couldn't find any nest close by, so we're just going to have, have to settle for the uh, pandanus fruits. What a nice, refreshing, sweet, sweet drink. Cheers. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on the pandanus in Northern Australia. If you like these videos, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. That way we can help promote bushcraft and rekindle it in Australia. If you'd like to do one of our BSA courses, please go to www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au My name's Gordon Bedman and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Aboriginal women would get a hook stick and finding one the correct size pull that uh, uh, branch down, or that leaf down I should say, and then they would uh, process that. Now I've had the privilege of, of going out bush with some Aboriginal elders in Arnhem Land and they've showed me how they do this. Then I've sat with them in a group and we've actually made some string. So what I'm doing... Yeah. Now that's a blooper.